from Hollywood, California, home of Primetime Shopping Network. All the doubters in the uh, in the operator bank, including Matt, including Wilson, even Patty, Patty, Patty. You don't believe me. No one believes me. I was telling them about a friend of mine. His name is Ray. Ray is homeless. He works, he did at the dog park I go to. Then he stopped doing that. He used to work at a bank 15 years ago, was successful, then had all kinds of back surgeries and had to get a lot of painkillers. He ended up being homeless. Nicest guy. Wilson, he sits at the park with bread, training rabbits, training them. And he's so good with rabbits. And Ray noticed, and we all got so mad, somebody painted a rabbit charcoal. Awful thing, awful thing. So Ray, my homeless friend, said, there might be a great rabbit rebellion. Just like you saw in the Planet of the Apes. Just like they had the Planet of the Apes, and they had beneath the Planet of the Apes, and they had outside the Planet of the Apes, the conquest of the Planet of the Apes, that's going to be nothing to the Great Rabbit Rebellion. What they're going to do, this is only a guess, Patty, 20, 30 years from now, some virus is going to kill all the nuts. Not the nuts, crazy people, but the nuts that rabbits eat. Some kind of virus, something strange. Call it the Tamasca virus. Something's going to kill all the nuts. These rabbits aren't going to be able to open up cans of planter nuts. How do you, could you pull that, Wilson? You know how hard it is to pull that? If you, if you got fingers, rabbits don't have fingers. So many rabbits are going to die because of this virus that killed all the nuts on the planet. They're going to realize it was the humans. They're going to rise up in rebellion, Wilson, and they're going to attack the humans. They're going to kill them. They're going to be smart about it. They're going to act cute. Oh, look at a little cute rabbit. Here, come here, rabbit. Come here, rabbit. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Oh, Juliet's shaking her head going, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. T talk to Charlton Heston, huh? Planet of the Apes. And what about his nice ape girlfriend? No, not ape. Uh, human girlfriend, Nova. Yeah, she couldn't even talk. All right, it probably won't happen. I just brought that up. It could happen, Wilson, right? <laughs> You're not going to cross that line. Well, I'll tell you what I do want to show you real fast. I have one of the biggest shows I've ever put together. Wilson, if they go to a wide shot, you will see five of the greatest Oleg's you're ever going to get a chance at. I am also introducing a new artist, a guy, a man and his wife that have taught art for 30 years plus. His name is John Milan. I'm going to be selling his originals telling you a lot more about them. We got a big show. But what I'm going to start with is something that I only have one, two, three, four, maybe five left, if even that, is my friend that I call the rascal, Michael Schofield. Michael Schofield uh, is one of the world's greatest landscape artists. He's 76 years old now. And Michael Schofield, early on in 2000 and uh, the 1990s, actually the 80s, he sold a lot of work on Hubs Historical. Here's a painting that Hubs Historical priced at $42,000. He's won every award you can think of. He is in the Smithsonian collection. He's in the Library of Congress collection. He is in the billion, with a B, billion dollar Arm and Hammer collection. 
Michael Schofield was one of the first to paint the backsides of trees blue. A lot of people stole it after he started doing it. Here's another one. Uh, I don't know which one this one is. Oh, before the rain, 42,000. Here, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, on eBay, an original watercolor by Michael Schofield. Schofield Pastel, gallery price 35000 Your price $18,999. At least they didn't put the 99 cents there. So this is a smaller Michael Schofield. This is BC 2702. Signed on the front. He likes to kind of hide it in there. You can find it, but he would always, early on when I started working with him, he'd always be critical of artists that would sign their name and it'd go, take up a quarter of the bottom of the painting. He thought that was a little pompous. So he always would blend it in right here, Schofield, blends in with the tree. And what size of a Schofield is this? Smaller Schofield. Look how rich that is in color. Now, I'm going to give you guys, I only have a few of these. I'm getting ready to warm up for my Peter Max, my Oleg's, my John Milan's. I got to test the water. Do you test the water before you jump in? Always. Always? Always. He did sign it on the back. Big Schofield signature on the back. I want everybody to participate. I got some really cool stuff tonight, but I just want everybody to participate. I want to see. I'm sticking my toe in the water. On this one? Yeah. All right, tell you what. Start at zero, $225 increments. This is a $20,000 Schofield. He doesn't paint much anymore. And, I mean, he is just... Look at that. I'm going to start at zero on an 18 by 24 Michael Schofield. And I hope you're out there because I'm sticking my toe in the water. Now, once the Great, great Rabbit Rebellion starts, that's where they'll get you, Patty. You'll go by a stream and go, oh, I'm just going to stick my little toe in the water. Yeah, and a little Wabbit's going to come up and go, wow. They made me say that word when I was in first grade, second grade. It's probably a special class. When everybody else got recess, I had to go to speech to say wabbit. And they'd always say, say the er. That's your problem, Barry. Don't say wabbit. Go er rabbit. Er run. Er rapidly run with the rabbit. Be careful of a rabbit rabbit. And Juliet, make sure everybody's prepared for the Great Rabbit Rebellion. Boy, would I be in trouble if that really happened? They'd call me a prophet, wouldn't they? Thousand. And who is on the line there, Juliet? Who? Mr. L, camera two, they're laughing at me, Mr. L, but there is a possibility way in the future of the Great Rabbit Rebellion. Yeah, I know they're cute. They eat little lettuce. Thousand going once because he does he even possibly give me the chance that there could be a Great Rabbit Rebellion. What's he say? Is that too crazy? Going twice. Does he think, does Mr. L think that that's even possible, Juliet? Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> yes, Mr. L. All in, all said, sold. Thank you. Yeah, the Great Rabbit Rebellion. Now, I only have one, two, three, four Schofields. This is one of the largest ones. This was painted in 2021. This is a seascape. So we don't think there's a possibility, Juliet, that the Great Rabbit Rebellion could happen? I value Mr. L's opinion. Oh, on the small one, uh, I'll tell you what. That's, the small one's going to be cheaper. Uh, uh, here, take a look at this seascape. Oh, that's everything for Mr. L. All right, this is BC seven two seven four eight. Oceans exhale. Do you ever swim in the ocean, Patty? You know, very. I'm an ocean person, but I don't like swimming. You don't like swimming. I used to love swimming in the ocean until I saw the Jaws. <laughs> that ruined it for me. And then when you think it's safe to go back in, Jaws too. All right, I'll tell you what, this is a lot larger Schofield. You know, if you ever watch, like me, I said the word me, Wilson, for a reason, because all day long when I'm not on TV, I watch me TV. I love that channel, but they have all these old shows like uh, they haven't had the Rockford Files lately, but a lot of the police shows of the 70s and 80s that Stephen J. Canal Productions produced, you'll see a Schofield landscape or a Schofield in the background. This is a large Schofield. This is one of the largest sizes Michael uh, um, painted. And once again, you'll see the signature hidden in the bottom in, in a sky blue. This is, yeah, nice sky blue signature. And on the back, he signed it and put 2021. All right, this one, this is one of the largest sizes. And talking to Michael, this was one of the most difficult paintings he had painted. He told me, I got yelled at by two artists this week. Schofield says, I don't appreciate the subtlety of the uh, water, just the mist coming off the waves. I don't appreciate that. And Oleg, I'll tell you what Oleg said. Hey, what? What did he think? What did Mr. L think about? He doesn't think the Great Rabbit Rebellion is going to happen. Hey, they didn't think. Look, look, Wilson, am I wrong? But a lot of people didn't think Skynet would happen. And look what happened to Arnold Schwarzenegger. You got the Terminator. All right, I know that's fake. Never mind. Here we go. I'll tell you what. This is a huge Schofield. Tell you what. I need... This one I need 1,000 to open. This should be 2,500 or 3,000 to open. This is a... This is one that Michael got mad at me. Look at that. That's what he got mad at me for, Wilson. See how he mixed that little pink in there? <coughs> That's what Michael can do. This is one of the last large Schofields I have. It's a 40 by 30. 
You can feel the waves breaking. A thousand to open. And this is, this, I got, yeah, look at the skies in the back. Wilson, were you ever, you were in the Army, not the Navy. What did the Navy say about that, Wilson? They were glad uh, they didn't have them. What? The Navy was glad they didn't have them. I can't say that, Wilson. You Army brat, you. Red skies at night, sailors delight. Red skies by morn, sailor take warn. I never really took to uh, water. I did. I had a little boat once, but uh. no open at a thousand dollars. All right, I am going to put up a really cool small one. Oh, I got a new artist work tonight, John Milan. I got the most amazing Oleg Javetins. Look at this. This one right here. Patty, Patty, Patty. It doesn't have an item number on the back. But let's figure out the name from what's happening. That looks like an inlet of some kind. Yeah, because it could only be one of three. One we sold. Well, this one doesn't have an item. Oh, yeah, it does. Could it be? What, what's the item number after BC 2708? So could it be 07 or 09? Something with an inlet. No, no, okay, here's, is Turquoise Creek 2708? No, what is 2708? Oh, 2708 is um, Lakefront Bliss. Here is Lakefront Bliss. As we quickly ascertain the name of the other Schofield using all the knowledge at our command. And what, what's the, you take your time. All right, on this one, perfect size. And he worked for Stephen J. Canal Productions. This is stunning. Tell you what, $250, started zero, $250 increments. Lakefront Bliss. No, I said bliss, Wilson. You see that? Wilson's over there singing that song. His, his, it's a ballroom blitz. His, that's all it takes to get Wilson going. I do not have an open on this yet. And then I'm going to move on to some other art. Oh, we got a great show. The Michael Schofield. Tell you what I'm going to do. Matt, if I am not wrong, which I am very often wrong. Oh, thank you, Juliet. We're going to have to get a... Uh, Patty, you going to come with me tonight? We're going to shovel. We're going to find Romeo. I gave her a break, and that's what she does. Hey... Well, I grabbed some other art, a couple more. I want you to see this. I made this on Michael Schofield. He's been a friend of mine for 35, 30 years. I call him the rascal because he will take a perfect situation and mess it up, and he'll take a hard situation 
and make it unbelievable. Take a look at the rascal. I'm Michael Schofield. I'm a, uh, an impressionist landscape artist. Landscapes are probably what I enjoy doing the most. And I think one of the reasons I enjoy doing what I do is because I enjoy being in nature. Landscapes to me speaks to, uh, speaks to who and what I am. I enjoy the outside. I love looking at different parts of the country. Every different part of the country is, is unique in its area. Landscapes are, are what I enjoy painting more than anything else. When I'm looking at the landscape, the first thing I do is to see the depth of the piece and how I'm gonna create the depth. How am I gonna create the foreground and the middle ground and the, and the background? And what it is that I'm gonna to have to do in order to jump over the hurdles it's gonna take in order to get that particular scene on, on canvas. Do I frame it right to left? Do I move these trees here? Do I do I bring a brook through the center of the piece? Do I bring it from left to right? You know, what's intriguing about this particular scene? Taking out all of the small details that don't make any sense and just getting the essence of the piece, that's what I do. That's what I envision when I first see the, the landscape. I think an artist's job is to interpret what the creator has laid out for us. We're just basically taking snapshots of that, interpret, putting in our own interpretation of it, our own feelings, our own emotion, and then presenting that to the viewers or to the public. That's art to me. So it really is just a, it's a statement of, of what we are and who we are, and it's translated through, in my case, landscapes. The idea of becoming an artist um, didn't really hit until high school. And it was one of those rainy days when the music instructor was filling in for the English teacher that couldn't make it to, to school. So he, um, he whipped out his watercolor um, palette and, and paints and a piece of watercolor paper and did a demonstration um, right in the class. And that was his way of filling in for, for the teacher. And well, I watched him do that, and I, I still remember what he painted. He painted an old railroad ties and some water in between the ties, and a couple of trees above it and reflecting in the water. And I thought, wow, that's, I really, that's what I want to do. Your life changes quickly, you know, and, your, and the direction changes quickly. Um, and then I think a lot of it is just following the path. Uh, we don't choose our career, it chooses us. I think that's very true. Uh, I think as long as you keep moving, that, that career will catch up to you, or you, you'll find the right, the right spot to walk into, or the right, the right uh, position to be in at the right time. You know, the doors open, you walk through them, see, what, see what's on the other side. I did a couple of one-man shows down in Florida. I think probably one of the more interesting one was what I did in Cleveland, a real, real wet, cold, snowy night. I really didn't think that I would have anybody show up for the show because it was so cold and miserable. We ended up having 1,100 people show up for the for the uh, for the event. We sold almost everything in the in the uh, the entire show, and 
the party didn't stop until about one, two o'clock in the morning. And uh, those were fun. We had a lot of people show up in those, in those particular, in those days. All throughout Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia. I did that for probably 10 years. There was a lot of shows. The most posters I think I had in one particular catalog was um, about 25. Back in the 90s, I think there was there was a few catalog companies that had uh, 10 or 15, but I think um, Editions Limited had uh, up to about 25 pieces. Interestingly enough, some of the pieces are still in catalogs dating back into the into the early 90s. There, and then you start to realize that you know all the millions of posters you're, you're selling happen to find their way in front of the public and. I think that's when you start to realize that uh, you're actually fairly famous in this, in this game. Well, I spent 10 years in, in Nashville, in that area. And I think a lot of the subject matter that I, that I paint today comes out of that era and out of that area. Um, Tennessee and Kentucky and Alabama, Mississippi, and even upstate New York. I love that area up there. You know, big pines, the big beech trees, the big birches. I think a lot of that uh, that I do today is reminiscent of those areas and of that subject matter. I paint in California quite a bit too, um, like, like today. Um, though, those areas I think are what I enjoy painting the most. One of the more difficult things is painting on location. A lot of people say, well, you got everything right in front of you. Well, you have too much in front of you. The artist has to take all of the elements, eliminate the things you don't need in the painting, and just paint the things that you do need. And you have to deal with the light changing. It changes rapidly. You're painting the shadows on one tree, and all of a sudden, they're not there anymore. So you have to take a mental snapshot of the area that you're looking at, and then paint that, because it's going to change five minutes from now. I think my paintings, they tell hope, and they tell adventure, and mystery, and romance, and I've been fortunate, really fortunate, to paint something that people really enjoy and, and feel and get uh, inspired from and fall in love with. And I like the growing aspect of becoming a better and better artist. Uh, I don't think you ever arrive as an artist. I think you're always arriving. You're eventually going to get there. I think eventually um, I'll, I'll get to a point where I feel comfortable with the work. I don't think I'll ever be satisfied completely with it. I like the idea that somebody can see one of my paintings and see a part of nature that they've been in, a place that they, they're familiar with, a scene that they know from, from childhood or some, some time in a vacation, something like that. That's when I feel like what I do actually rings home. That's important to me. They can actually relate to the landscape. So um, the communication between the painter and the, the viewer is what's important. Hi folks, we're back. Yeah, I made that a long time ago on Michael Schofield. He, uh, he's a hard working, he's been painting all of his life, 
and very successful. Um, I have a total of five, one, two, five total Michael Schofields left on this planet, and they are stunning. I haven't, I, this was painted in 2021. This one right here is a 30 by 40, I believe. It's BC 2751. The outers, what is it? What's the name of it? The what? The outdoors. The outdoors. 30 by 40. The outdoors. Now, this is a large painting. I mean, when you start talking about 30 by 40, to have a landscape like that, and this one was painted in signs, Mike Schofield, 21 on the back, and Michael signed it on the front, and he signed it in a beautiful blue gray. Uh, right there, Wilson, find his signature. This is a cameraman test, Wilson. Good. You pass that part. Give the man a job. No, <laughs> Take a look at this. Look how he mixes these yellows, these greens, little shade of purple and pink right there. That's what he can do better than anybody. He sold so many posters for Editions Limited. I, and I always knew him and, and loved his originals. To be in the billion dollar arm and hammer collection. I have six, and what I want to do is I want to show you all uh, five. I have five. I want to show you all five, and then we'll, tell me which ones you want. I'm going to just put this one right here. Now, we already showed the turquoise. What was the name of this one? Yes, Lakefront Bliss. You talk about using colors that don't clash. Look at that. I mean, you got a lot of tough colors to mix next to each other, but Michael's gift is doing it in a way that it doesn't clash. Now, Patty, I am going to put this next one up because this is it for Schofields for a while because we don't have any more. This was done in 22. Is that 02 or 22? 22. 22. Now, folks, I'm going to hand you this one too. I just showed this one, right? Or have I? No, I haven't. Yes, yeah, sorry. Take a look at this. This is a darker color scheme. And what you see, Michael, you can just feel. What is it? 2750. The Creek's Edge. I don't know about you, Patty. When I was a kid, I grew up, I, I got to play in a creek. Yeah, there's one right near my house. At least I thought it was safe. My mom said, why don't you go play in the creek? Just just be careful. Yeah, no, she, she said, just be careful crossing the highway. And I know it's nighttime, but you'll be fine. <laughs> you know? No, there's no alligators there. That's not what you want to worry about. <laughs> it's the guns, Barry. Anyway, no, that's... Uh, so this is this is $25,000. This is what Stephen J. Canals um, production spot for Michael. This is what why he's in the billion dollar Harm and Hammer collection, the Library of Congress collection, the Smithsonian collection. If you go to the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., they have Michael Schofield's work in their collection. Now look at this. I just want to show them all. I'm going to take offers. I'm, I'm going to give you guys deals of a lifetime. We just showed this, the outdoors. Now, 
Now I should test Michael Schofield, Wilson. 2751. I should say, Michael, you paint a 30 by 40 called the outdoors. I want you to paint a mate to that that you call the indoors. And I want the indoors to be a, so you can look through a glass window and see forest on your sides, but see the outdoors through the indoors. Can you do it? Oh, he could do it. Look at those vibrant yellows and pumpkin colors. Look at that branch. See the blues he mixed in? He, that creates depth. And that was something that made him so famous in the late 80s, early 90s. His ability to paint the backsides of, of trees blue in a way that could show distance, mute the colors, but add to the painting. So that is this page. All right, Patty. The next one I've had up, but I'm going to show it one last time. BC 2748. In a matter of minutes, I'm going to introduce you to a new artist, John Milan. I'm going to introduce you to some of the greatest Oleg Javetins I've ever seen. Look at that. I agree with you, Wilson. But you're smart, you'll make it happen. Wilson's asking if you should put a lens on the camera because these waves, are you getting wet over there, Patty? Because this, this is just getting me here. All of this, look at this. Look at that, Wilson, don't let the lens get water drops on it. Look at that. Have you been near the ocean when the waves do that spray? You know what I'm talking about, Wilson? The mist, shh, yes, the mist. That is a great painting. And that sky right here pulls it together. This one, nice as Schofield's. All right, well this one, oh, hey, maybe we do. We do, I put it back there. This BC 708, 2708. No, it's already got 2704. Oh. All right, well. This one. Uh, yes. 2704. Oil on canvas. Now, folks, in less than 20 minutes, I'm going to show you Oleg's that are so amazing. I'm going to show you a new artist who runs an art school, John Milan. I'm going to show you all kinds of great stuff. Look at that background to that. Folks, this is what a great Michael Schofield looks like. Call me up. Patty, I know because in 20 minutes I get to show some of the greatest Oleg Javetins I've ever seen. I have the great works of John Milan, but right now, with 19 minutes left before dish, I'm so easy, put me under a street lamp with an umbrella, just like Wilson. Put me there. Um, just call me up. I've shown you six, five Michael Schofields. So we sold one. I sold you five. Tell me which ones you want. Call me up. Make me some offers. Because I only, I can't take. I mean, like on this one, this is stunning. Patty, which is your favorite of those? Well, of course, the ocean. The, the seascape. Juliet, what is the favorite, your favorite? Oh, the outdoors. She can what? 
Yeah, no, just make it, just keep teasing the police, Juliet. Juliet says she likes the outdoors because she can hide bodies there. All right, let's put up your favorite piece. People would think we're joking, but she just said, I like the piece called The Outdoors because that's where I can hide dead bodies. No, she didn't. No, you said it. Didn't she say it, Patty? All right, folks. I shouldn't do this. I am impressed. Patty picked this as her favorite, and I got yelled at, not yelled at, but talked to by Michael. He goes, dude, look, he didn't say dude, he said, Barry, look at my paintings. I mean, did you see how much work to make uh, th this look like mist is coming off the rocks? He says, this is one of the greatest paintings I did, but you just show it, you don't tell them, look at it. Barry, look at the painting. Okay, Michael. So, because this is Patty's favorite painting, because this is one of the most expensive Michael Schofields I have, BC 2748 Ocean's Exhaust. I don't know if I would have called it that, Michael. I'm a, Oceans exhale. Eh. I, you know, might have called it Sailor's Delight. Yeah, that's what I would have called it. So this is a $25,000 original Michael Schofield. One that he lectured me that I don't appreciate, and I do appreciate it. I really like it. So, Patty, there's only one thing to do. Start at zero, $250 increments. Yeah, I only got 17 minutes, 16 minutes until Dish joins us. So you guys are not, Wilson thinks raccoons, the revenge of the raccoons before the revenge of the rabbits. Zero to open, $250 increments. Now, Patty, another thing to my point about the great rabbit, uh, what do they call it, rabbit? What are they gonna, rebellion. When a lady is pregnant, you wanna you want find out if a lady's pregnant, what do they have to do? They kill a rabbit. They kill a rabbit. Wilson, tell us how that works. I think that's where that song came. Another one bites the dust. I don't know. You're telling me that's not true, Juliet? Maybe in the olden days. I'm starting at zero. At a Schofield that I got lectured on by the artist Michael Schofield. I think those skies are so absolutely amazing. And I'm sitting here at zero. I'm one of the great Michael Schofields. This is not good. That rock would be slippery. You ever walked on a slippery rock, Wilson? No open once. I'm going to end this bad idea quickly. No open twice. On a huge 30 by 40 seascape by legendary artist Michael Schofield that on Hubs Historical they get 20, 30, 40,000. No open twice. And just to be fair, I got to test the phones. The phones work, right? Yes, sir. All right. Let me go here. All right. Let's.
let's see. Eight five five four seven four six seven seven eight. Thank you, we got the open. We have the open. No, you're talking to me, I was testing the phones. We have $250. Now I've known Michael a long time. I cannot buy this painting for $250. I can't buy this painting for 500 or a lot more than that. But just think about this. Wilson, that is a great painting. I'm at $250 looking for so much more. I mean, this 500 has been bid. This is a 5, 10, 20,000 wholesale painting. This is 25,000 any day of the week. I'm at 500 looking for 750. Take your time. Yes. We're at five looking for seven fifty. Oh, this is crazy. This is loco. This is cocoa to cocoa puffs. Did your kids eat that? Wow, this is gonna leave a mark. Five hundred dollars going once. And this is your favorite painting? No, I'm joking. It's one of mine. I'm looking at Ash. Uh, I'm looking at Patty. So, anybody want a real deal on an amazing Michael Schofield? We are uh, we're at one bidder five hundred going once. One bidder going twice, fair, and final warning, all in, all said, way too cheap, sold. And folks, uh, if there were any of the other Schofields you would like to call, make an offer on, I thank you. Uh, I am gonna move along to some other art here uh, in a second, but uh, that is gone, way too cheap. And I'll tell you what, because we got a few minutes, the other ones that didn't sell, let me just, Patty's neck is bothering her. She's got some hernia, herniated disc. Oh, hey, you can, you can be honest with me. Did Juliet do it to you? <laughs> Did you hurt Patty? Did you say, Patty, grab a shovel, come out to the great outdoors with me? <laughs> Patty, oops, there goes my mic. Hey, I'm still on. <laughs> can you hand me those gently? I'm going to set them up. This is last, last, last call for Michael Schofield. And we're going to put, these are all I have left, and I thank you. Call me up. Here's one. Wilson, don't try this at home, kids. Two. And this is three. And after this, I'm coming to the, the real part of the show. I have some of the most amazing art. I have a new artist who runs a teaching studio. I have some of the greatest Oligs. Oh, yeah. There they are. 
If you are interested in any of these Michael Schofields, call make some offers. You go trick or treating as a kid, Patty. Yeah. My goodness, you got grandkids? Three. That's not possible, really? Oh my goodness. How many grandkids yet, Wilson? Do you have any grandkids? Two. Do you have some grandkids, Ronita? I don't think that's I don't think that's possible, Juliet. I ask her uh, are they I, I ask her so are is it a boy or a girl? She said I got three, one of each. I I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> so Oh, I'd give you these call. Negotiate with Patty. Ashley's working the phones from a different location. We're grateful for her help. And I am a mere seven minutes away. Oh, I got a number. But wait till you see the John Milan art. So people, how come when I dial this number, comes up maybe Ashley? Best price. Oh, I'm going to work on a deal. This one right here. The outdoors. All right, I'm coming over there. Um, I'm coming there. Got to be honest, Juliet. After I found out all you've done, I'm scared of you. Protect me, Patty. And uh, yeah. I just gave them a great price because I'm wonderful, Wilson. You got to be a nice person to give a good price. Oh my goodness. That's a gorgeous what is what do they say? Are they conveying that back? You know, it's I'm glad we have all this high-tech communications because, you know, on the roof, we still have the smoke signals. That, uh, Wilson, you were a good sport back then. And I just like I told you, your hair will grow back from that fire. <laughs> you know, it's just... What do they say? No? Passing? Okay. Well, I am good. What's that? Oh. Nothing yet. I didn't say passing. You said... So, Juliet, now that we have time here, just a couple of minutes, when did this urge come over you to hit people with shovels and then dig holes and tell yourself they're just resting? <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean to. <laughs> that scared me. I'm sorry I said that. Protect me, Wilson. This woman's. I might have upset her. Sold. Thank you. This one is gone. Oh. 
There you go. Now watch this trick because I still have four minutes till Dish joins in. I got an original Peter Max. All right. Do not try this at home. Don't try it at all because I can't do it. I was going to try Wilson and put this one on top. That ain't going to work, is it? Hang on. Is that too high up? Yes, I will put it right there. These are the last three Schofields. Give us a call. I got to spend, and Patty did too, and Matt, some time with uh, a few minutes with Oleg. Very fascinating. His knowledge of Russian history and uh, he's telling us about Prior to Putin, he, you know, he was born and grew up in Uzbekistan. And he was saying that in winter, in Uzbekistan, they didn't, he had a school there, but they didn't have a bathroom in the school. You had to go outdoors and do your business. And he said it would be like 510 below zero. And he'd have to, they go out there, and he said some mornings it would be snowing. You couldn't even find this little room they wanted you to go into uh, to do your business. And, uh, well, folks, I want to thank you. Matt, what, how much, to, oh, man, I would be all over that one on the bottom or that one on the top. I'm as easy. Uh, you know, put me in high heel shoes tonight. Under a street lamp. Look at that. I'm taking crazy offers and I want to thank you. My Google, my Apple atomic clock here, hence my phone says, I only have less than two minutes to dish network. Is that a watch? You got a Timex? Takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Oh, don't get me started. All right. Yeah, you should see what I wear. Have you seen it, Wilson? Oh, it's a great watch. It's my Bolex. People go, you mean a Rolex? I said, no, it's a Bolex. <laughs> no, I don't have a, I don't wear a watch. This is my watch. This is my phone. This is my Gmail. Steve Jobs was right. Does everything. Uh, all right, hey. One minute left. So here's what we're going to do. I am going to gently hand these to, I'm just going to put them right here for you, Patty. I can hand them to you. I'm sorry Juliet did that to your neck. <laughs> and uh and she all because she she had you like this to hear Patty tell the story. She had her in a neck brace and Juliet's going, "Say you're sorry, Patty. Say you're sorry." All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Dish Network. My name's Barry Chapel. This is a Wednesday night 
art show. I have some art tonight. I have six of the most amazing Oleg Javetins you've ever seen. I also have a new artist that's never been on the, my shows. His name is John Milan. John and his wife Ellie run an art academy. Some amazing uh, artwork. We're focusing on one of his series called the Transcendent series. Also got a Peter Max. I just, Wilson, I'm going to show this because this one, oh, look at those Oleg's. This one piece. is sticking out compared to the John Milan. Before I show you this, Wilson, look at the bottom of that. That is your official Peter Max archival number. This piece is called Two Hearts. What's the atom number? 2746. 2746. I have been saving this painting, waiting. I'm in my 33rd year of live TV, waiting, Patty. Just hoping there are two cardiologists that got married. And they go, you know, we need a painting to celebrate that both were both heart doctors and it's a Peter Max. Odds of getting another one on live TV, slim to none. Now Wilson, I'm gonna push this up a little bit. Did I make it worse or better? All right, I'm gonna push it back a little bit. I just don't want the glare. They can, folks, I wanna tell you about Peter Max. Peter Max is 84, I believe. Peter Max is one of the best known living pop artists ever. That is his gallery in Manhattan, maybe 25 years ago, 20 years ago. That's his high limit room. All those uh, unique original Peter Max on the wall, th there is best. He painted that Baldwin piano. That is the Peter Max. Peter Max, a lot of people know this, he was a cover of Life magazine. Peter Max was born, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, look at that. He, let me show you something here. He has been, he has created the official award for the Grammys. He has created the official Super Bowl poster several times, I believe. Let me just tell you a little bit about this because, wow, his book is Bicentennial, Peace in 2000, and of his Statue of Liberty adorned, adorned over 145 million Verizon phone books. Uh, his, life began, uh, his life began as an adventure. He was born in Germany. Then from the age of one, can be mapped across China, Tibet, Israel, and France before he reached his ultimate destination, America, with a uh, pan culture background, such as uh, for, for building for artists. I mean, he's amazing. And Peter Max went through so many different phases. He used to paint realism in the late 50s, that's a max painting. 
But then he moved to pop art. The, he called it the Cosmic Awakening. And folks, something's up with Peter Max and Peter Max graphics. I've been selling a lot of Maxes in the 33 years. This is a unique, original acrylic on paper. Now just to show you, 11 years ago, a unique original, this one done in 1992, 62,500. That's Neon Man in Blue. Here is Zero in Black, 42,000. Here is Blushing Beauty. This comp is seven, eight years old. On eBay, $40,000. What you got to make sure you have when you buy a Peter Max is the official Peter Max archive number. That means there is a copy of your work, your finished work, in the Peter Max archives that they can prove that that was done by Peter Max. And they have a picture of your piece there. Here is long ago and far away, 1972. 45,000. Here is a comp from eight years ago. Shop.com, 80,000. But the hearts are what he is so famous for. Peter Max also, with the help of Lee Iacocca, raised $331 million to reopen the Statue of Liberty. Peter Max was depressed because he kept looking from his office, he could see the Statue of Liberty and to have it closed, that just drove him crazy. And finally, with the help of Lee Iacocca and Peter Max, $331 million later, and three years it was reopened. In the 1970s, it had been shut down. You couldn't go up in the Statue of Liberty. When it did open up, there was Ronald Reagan, Nancy Reagan was there, Lee Iacocca. Nancy Reagan invited Peter Max to the White House where they drew pictures of the Statue of Liberty on the White House yard. If you ever get one of those Statue of Liberty on paper that says uh, W.H. Lawn, or White House lawn, or painted with Nancy, they're worth a ton. So, tell you what I'm gonna do. Retail, and I do know auctioneers. And the Heart Series, I got a little bit of glare there. Is it the way the painting is sitting, Wilson, or is it just because I'm shining so bright. What's causing the glare? 92,000. People laugh at me, take a cruise, get a couple drinks in you, and you got to pay for the framing and shipping and everything else. You've been on a few cruises, right? No one's ever taken you on a cruise. Okay, now I'm going to knock my Max over. So I got to... Is that better, Wilson? So I got to stand here and hold it, or I can try and move it way back. How's that? No, that's bad. I'm going to leave it like that, and we're going to... It is a great piece. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. One and I got a special price. Yeah, they want they want ninety two thousand on cruise ships or more. And this one, the two hearts, is a large one, thirty four by forty six, custom framed.
I'm going to give someone a deal, an early deal, $5,500. And you can get yourself. That is the last Peter Max I have. Prices have been going up and up and up. And, I mean, in the last five years, it's like somebody thinks he's going to be painting for God, Wilson. You know, that happens to all of us, Wilson. Someday you'll be working camera for God. Or you'll be working camera for... Never mind. Patty, will he be working camera for God or Lucifer? No, God. God. Right, give me your honest opinion, Patty. You know her very well and she has injured your neck. Will Juliet be answering phones for God or the devil? The devil? You the devil? You got somebody that's going to be... No, Wilson, I'm telling you. I asked Patty. No, Patty said, you know who she'll be asking, answering for phones for. And she went like this. <laughs> All right, give me a call. Folks, I can't do much better. That is an original Peter Max, unique original, acrylic on paper. It was done in 2008, and it's got the registration number. People who have taken Park West Cruises know that they sell littler P Peter Maxes that are, you know, just like a tenth of this or a fifteenth, and they want seven and eight thousand. It's my understanding, and it's only an understanding for people who is, do auctions for them, that many of their subject matters, you know, like Umbrella Man and Statue of Liberty and all that, they're running out, they're gone. And Peter Max is 84 years old. He suffered from early in his career, early onset of certain form of dementia. And he'd have to get someone from the court because his managers would try and take advantage of him. Um, and his daughter Libra was trying to be appointed by the court to watch out for Peter Max. He actually, one court appointed a uh, person would only let Peter Max visit his daughter, Libra, once a week for, uh, no, uh, for an hour, up to three times a week, on a bench in New York, but they had to make a reservation two weeks before. And it could be canceled any time by the, uh, the, the person watching for the state. So anyway, any interest on Peter Max? Okay. I want to talk to you about my next artist. Patty, for right now, this is heavy. Her neck's hurting. So I'm just going to can slide it somewhere. All right, here we go. Uh, a minute, I'm going to show you some Oleg's, but this piece, I believe, is called Harmony. This man, John Milan, has run 
an art academy with his wife. Look at that, Wilson. I'm going to show you something here. Get out of that, go here, no. All right, let me open this. Let me go back. I want to show you something. Because this artist, John Milan, they're in New York. He's in New York right now with a lot of his former students. John and Ellie Milan's bio. John was born in Bellflower, California. John Milan is currently living in beautiful Sarasota, Florida with his growing family of six. Has developed many styles of art and brought them to life with a vibrant color and surreal figures in his mixed media and oil painting. Starting with an initial inspired story of in mind frenzy, uh, and he does everything. I just want to show you, I'm going to show you a picture of John and his wife. That is the Milan family today. Here's a picture of John and Ellie Milan. This guy is an artist artist. John even sent this painting, which hung, hang, hung in his house. He says, I'm going to send you something really special. One of the favorite paintings I ever did. This is BC 2765. Now, John does different styles. And this is oil on canvas. And I have some work from what he calls his Transcend series. And this one is called Tranquility. Is that right? That's correct. This is huge. Now, if you went into a gallery that hand, handled John Milan, you would be probably for something, an original. That's a one-of-a-kind original like this. Sign John Milan, oh, twelve to fifteen thousand, easy. And that is stunning. He has a way of bringing colors that you look at it. When I first saw some of his work, I'm going, this is like Kandinsky, you know, mind melted through Vulcan mind melt into John. I mean, this is beautiful. Oh, look at that. What, what I'm going to do, can you pick one of those from the Transcend series? Just pick one, maybe. I'm going to put this back, but I'm going to show you something else. This is an original. This is called Transcend Wisdom. Right here. That is oil on paper. Yes. On the 
John Milan. Oh, that, there's no doubt that John Milan is, is his version of Impressionism, but he's done it in a way that he makes the subjects even brighter. Like the bottom of that painting is bright. Yes, I guess you could call it somewhat Impressionism, but it's his own school uh, and his own ideas he's developed like this. This is called Transcend Wisdom. This is either acrylic or oil on paper. This is one of his originals. It is on paper. It is called Transcend 18 Wisdom. It's 20 times 24. Now, in his gallery, he probably unframed like this be $2,500, Patty, probably. But I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to get somebody going. Look at that. That is unbelievable. That's a one of a kind, Patty. That's not a picture, a photograph. He hand painted this. Look at those shades under the tree of green, Wilson. Tell you what I'm going to do on this. Yeah, this is going to be $2,500. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. $600 to open, Patty. On an original John Milan. $600. I just want to get some action going. I want you to understand I've done an awful job. I'm going to print for next show a lot of his bio. Oh, my goodness. It's what? He said Milan was an expressionistic, uh, expressionistic colorist. Expressionistic colorist. I can live with that, and I will talk to John about it, too. Here, you want to talk about an expressionistic colorist? Look at this. No open on that one. Patty, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show a couple more real fast. Look at this. If you could grab the one behind, I'm gonna, I don't want them to get damaged in any way. Yeah, take the one, take wisdom away. That's work for me, I take wisdom away all the time. <laughs> this is light, transcend light. That is a hard original to paint. The transcend theory, that's the one. Is that, is that, which one? Is that your favorite or? All right, pick out your favorite. This is one of my favorites. Yeah, you're talking 2,500, 3,500 in a gallery or more. Watch this, $600 to open. That's an original. That is acrylic on, uh, on uh, paper. $600 to open, $100 increments once we get the open. That is, and I'm going to explain Transcend. I'm going to tell you about his graduation party for a lot of his, the artists from the John Milan Academy. I will show you. Which one? Look at that. Would they like to bid on this? We're going to show the Oleg's in about five minutes. Any interest in this one? I'll tell you what, every... What? Okay. All right, so I think we have... Yeah, we're going to the Oleg's here in a second, but I'll tell you what. Patty, somebody wants to open, but they want to talk to you.
Yeah, this is amazing. Look at that. That's an original oil. I mean, I'm just, I'm introducing at 600. That's a steal. All right, so this is sold. Thank you. This is sold. And I got to be very careful with it. Now, I'm going to show you one more, but I am getting a lot of calls for Oleg. So here's what I'm going to do. Look at this. You talk about a color theorist. Look at this. 2,500 in a gallery any day of the week. BC 2778 Harmony. This is one of the coolest paintings. That's an original acrylic on paper by John Milan. Oh, this is too cheap. 600 to open. $100 increments once we get the open. And do we, I got to make sure because uh, all of our operators are busy. Um, is there any chance anybody's calling in on this when all the operators are busy? Well, folks, this one right here is called Transcend Harmony. And Wilson, get them lost in that painting because this is an original John Milan. John and Ellie Milan teach an art college, an art school, and it's an amazing art school. And they just had a big shindig in Miami. Look at that. Folks, this should be three, four thousand. I'm giving you a deal at six hundred to open. That is uh, acrylic on paper, John Milan. Uh, no open on this one. Well, I can't tell. <laughs> a lot of folks online. Folks, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, someone's going to buy Harmony. Watch. You're going to put your phone down, and someone's going to call up and say they want Harmony right now. What? Yeah, this is Harmony. I thought this would look at that. That is unbelievable. But what I'm going to do right now is come sit over here. I, I want to talk to you now about one of the all-time greatest artists I've ever met. Isn't that amazing? You got Harmony on there. Oh. This is the first time I met Oleg in person. Look at this. This is December 4th, 2006. I met with Oleg. He had been working with Collector's Editions. And every time I call Collector's Editions, I, I'd say, where's Oleg? Oh, he's in Russia. And I said, well, how can I write to him or call him? Well, you can try this. It was a bogus deal, uh, Wilson. So I kept calling and pestering. 
Finally, I found out Oleg was living in California, maybe a hundred miles from me. And I got a hold of him. We met finally on December 4th, 2006. And I've been doing business with Oleg ever since. He used to work for a company called Collector's Editions. He was their star artist. To give you an idea, Wilson, here is Oleg, 2011, 12 years ago, on Art Brokerage, retail price, 104000 asking price, 95000 Oleg is one of the few artists I know, and you can show him the, yeah, there you go, that has sold more, in one year he sold more than 10 paintings, each one for over $100,000. He was a star artist of collector's editions. Here is one of his best paintings he ever painted. It was called Sailor's Heart. Look at that. What's interesting, this is Sailor's Heart in 2011. Is that sold? Oh, okay. 2011. It sold on our brokerage for 44800 The person who bought it for 44800 Relisted two years later and sold it for ninety-five thousand. Oleg Javetin is one of the greatest Russian Romanticism artists you're ever gonna see. And he was talking to us today uh, about he first went to a special school. He was born in Uzbekistan, and in Uzbekistan, if you're really talented, they will send you to the school of your talent. And he was so talented in high school, they sent him to a special college for talented artists. He graduated that when he was 18, and he applied to the Surikov, but he wasn't accepted the first time. He had some feelings about that today. He said, Barry, reason I not accepted uh, political. There were people in the Politburo, their kids wanted, and they took my spot. Very next year I got in, and Oleg Javetin did something very rare. He got a master's degree in art from the Surikov the toughest college in Russia, in Moscow, to get a master's degree in art. I am so fortunate. I have five, maybe six, original Oleg's tonight. He took us through a tour, and I want to show this because he was very proud about this painting. Now, This is called Book Friend. And he said, Barry, look at this painting. What you're going to notice first, it's monochromatic. It is stair-stepping browns and blacks. He says, people think monochromatic is easy. He said, it's harder than some of my most colorful originals. Now look at that book. That book has a nose and a mouth. Do you see the mouth, Wilson? I see the eyes, the nose. It is 36 by 48. It is BC 2761. It is oil on canvas. Now, Wilson, 
just like I was talking the prior segment about how Michael Schofield got mad at me. True story. And Juliet, I need your protection on this. And Patty, I need your protection. Because Oleg tells me, he said to me, Barry, please, you know, tell them if you go to buy this anywhere else, cost you two hundred thousand dollars. Why you no tell them that, Barry? I said, well, I'm going to tell it tonight. He says, but you should always tell it. This is original. Master graduate Surikov. I have sold many paintings for three, four, five hundred thousand. Why you not tell it? I said, I'm going to tell it tonight. And then he said to me, this is yesterday, not today. He says, Barry, if you don't tell people they should pay 200000 for this painting. I come by next week and smack you. He said he's going to smack me. And I said, uh-oh, Juliet's going to save me. This is called Book Friend. Now, you look at this girl. She is reading feverishly. It's 36 by 48. It is absolutely stunning. It is a monochromatic masterpiece. To mix in every geometrical angle you can think of, to tell a story, and to do it all in brown, black, and white. Look at that, a little bit of a few other shades. Retail on this, $95,000. Folks, I hope you get one of these. Oleg is probably the most, one of the most valuable artists I've ever worked with. I have worked with him for 17 years in person. And collector's editions did everything on the plant to make me believe he was in Moscow or I would have met him a year and a half earlier. I just want to show you, look how Oleg signs it on the back right there Wilson signs it measurements everything now I am going to show you Patty I'm going to grab it one of the greatest Oleg's Wilson let me just tell him this one of the greatest Oleg's I've ever seen him paint in the entire 17 years I've known him better than anything he ever painted for collector's editions, but I didn't see all the work he painted. This is the masterpiece of the year. Now hang on, folks. Okay. Now I don't want you to hurt your... Here, I'm going to grab it by the wood. I'm going to get a splinter. Wilson says that it's good right there. Hang on, is that too high, Wilson? Okay. okay. He said, you know how long the texture took me? This piece is called Marble Beauty. He said to me, when I first walked in, he says, Barry, does that look like marble to you right there? He said, to get that to look like marble and then to raise all of this higher gold and then to make this look identical to marble. And he said, I used a lot of pink in it, but look at her eyes. He says, look, it's like the wind is blowing. And when he was talking to me and Patty earlier, and Patty was taking pictures of him everywhere, signing everything, um, it is just amazing. He said, look at the focus in her. Look at that look. Folks, about every... 
uh, four or five years, I get an old league like this. This is probably 150,000 if it had been at collector's editions. I mean, at retail would be 150,000. Look at the hair in the cape blowing in the wind. This is huge, too. And Patty said, and you're right, it doesn't need to be framed. You, you just, yeah. Look at that marble. Do you see that marble table right there? Stop right there, Wilson. Look at that. That, that, that looks, feels, you want to go sit on it. It's marble. Look at that. And to have a painting 49 by 49, look at that. This is one of the greatest paintings I have ever seen. Now the question I have, Patty and Matt, this is a very important question. Should I show all of them, the other three or four, or should I just start with this one? Okay. Now is that like, a, what is that? That thing that says Windex? It's a, a humidifier, I believe. Oh, okay. So air, so I, I know, I was going to put it in front of that, but I... Oh, no. Don't do that, yeah. Okay. Now, hang on. I don't want you getting any splinters. Ready? Go. Oh, you got a bad neck, thanks, too. Okay. Now, folks, this, if you want an Oleg, and it's going to be a very, very, very long time. Oleg, he says, most people, he says, like, on this face. Can you help me with that? Is that a bear? Oh, I got this. Yeah. Just on her expression. He says, Barry, I've been doing this since I was small. Just on the face. It's called first touch. He says, just on this face. As talented as I am, I spent five and a half days just on the face. Just that portion of the face. He knows what works. He had to be accepted into a special school for one of the most talented artists in all of Russia. This is the old Russia, when Uzbekistan was a satellite country. He was telling us stories about when he was a kid in Uzbekistan the, little, the elementary school he went to didn't have a bathroom. Basically, even though it would be minus 10 degrees, you walk outside, 40 yards or 30 yards is a little house you go in. That was his bathroom. He says now it's all, they all got bathrooms and it's all been remodeled and done, but look at that. First touch. He was talking about this lady touching him, and the gentleman's going to reach up and touch her, but the first touch. All of that gold embroidering is what Oleg learned at the Surikov. He was talking to me about some of his favorite artists. He said, Barry, he says, you know, in, in May, I turned 60. Favorite artist, 60 different than favorite artist at 40. One of my all time favorite artists, Shai Shishkin. He said he paints so realistically 
You think it's a poster. Or you think it's a window and you can walk right outside. He said, that's talent. Look at this. Russian Romanticism. Master's degree from the Surikov in Moscow. One of the toughest art colleges on the planet. All right. Now, what I am going to do, Patty, is grab it up top. And well, what we can do is, here, I got it. I don't want to hurt your neck. Um, I hope you're out there tonight because Oleg is one of the all-time greatest artists, period. What? Oh, we got one here? Oh, yeah. Look at this. The Harlequin. Look at this. Oh. Folks, Oleg has used every geometrical shape you can think of. The Harlequin. He was telling us that was first uh, Italian word, then a French word. Look at that. I'm, I'm going to get out of the light there. Every geometrical shape you can think of. Look at that. That is what a master graduate of the Surikov in Moscow. Born in Uzbekistan, he loves California. He says, you got to be crazy not to love weather here. If they don't, tell them to go to Uzbekistan in the winter. <laughs> Look at that. Look at the hats they have on to cheer you up. Every geometrical shape you can think about. I hope you are able to get one of these. I only have a few more to show you. If you don't hurt yourself, I am going to come over here and grab this one. Oh, and I'll get the big heavy one over there, Patty. This one right here. The dancer. Look at that, folks. Look at that. Two, seven, six, four. And I'm talking 15, 20. Well, I've known him since 2006, so 23, 25 years ago when he was with Collector's Editions. They get a hundred grand for this. I mean, this is Russian Romanticism done by Oleg Javet. And look at that. Every geometrical shape, every brush stroke has a purpose to make the hair blow in the wind, the guitar she's holding. And he was explaining to us. What is that big orange patch there, Patty? Because he was saying, you see the guitar, and that is a sign of the music coming out, or look at that. It's radiating. $125,000 is a list price on Oleg Chavetin. He says the wind is blowing her hair. Uh, 
Then he asked, he asked Patty and me, who, American actress, that the wind blew up her dress? Marilyn. And we said, Marilyn Monroe, yes. Look at that. All right, Patty, I'm going to take this one back, and then I got. Say what now? What do you mean? What's a fan? We're talking about the circle, not the one turning around. Oh, it could be. It could very. Well, on her hand is a fan, but. Yes, it is a fan. But the circle. She is right. The circle's a fan. Way to go, Ashley. It is a fan. Stay. All right, now, folks, I'm about to show you. Unheard of. Unheard of. I got this one. This. This is going to be. Hang on. I got it, Ash. I'm going to put my mic in my pocket. Oops. Oh, that almost. I will I want to get this right so it doesn't hit the canvas. So let's pull it over your way a little. Right there. Yeah. Unbelievable. What's that? Yeah. Marble bench. We've already shown this, right? Yes, we've shown all of them. Except for one smaller one. Tell you what. This is as good as it gets. Um, you know what? Let's show the other little one real fast. I'll tell you what. Hold that shot. Because this one is very light, and I can put it right on top just to show it to you so they see what we're talking about right here, Wilson. This one is called Protection. It's 26 inches by 33 and a half. Two seven six three. Look at the face inside, the face there, the hand gestures. And usually when there's two faces, it means what they're telling you might not always be what they're truly feeling. And that's a study in color. Now. I'm going to move that along, put that back. I have six original Oleg's. Folks, call me. Tell me which one you're most interested in. Oleg's like this rarely come along. And I always go easy on the first collar or two. I just, I'm superstitious. I have not seen a painting like this from Oleg. I've known him for 17 years. All that texturing, unbelievable. And this is item number 2760, Marble Beauty.
how we made that marble chair there. Blend that in as she puts one foot on a leaf. This is one of the greatest Oleg's I have ever seen in my 33 years on TV. I remember when I got to meet Oleg, it was highlight of the year. And then about a, six months later, I got to buy out some of collector's editions signed and numbered work. Never did I dream I'd have a huge 49 by 49. Four feet and one inch by four feet and one inch. I got a price in mind. Let me go to camera two. I have six Oleg Javettins here. The star of a company called Collector's Editions. Master graduate from the Surikov in Moscow. Before the Surikov in Uzbekistan, he was sent to a special school just for artists. He said maybe 40 people from all the Soviet Union get to be picked. He was one of them. Uh, and got his, his, his four-year degree, then he went on to the Surikov. Tell me which one. I have six. If there's any way you can swing an Oleg, you should. I, I would go over this marble beauty because I think that's possibly the greatest Oleg I have seen ever. I had one called the Three Graces that I bought. I gave, offered it to the customers first. And after the second time, I bought it myself. It hung in my house. I got a price in mind for this. It's not going to be 150000 100000 It's not going to be fifty, forty, dollars or 30000 it's not even going to be 20000 You are talking about one of the greatest Oleg Javettins. That is an oil on canvas. Actually, this was actually oil on linen. Oil on linen. Yes. You're right. Oil on linen. And that, that raised gold. He said he, he learned that at the Surikov, and that's very difficult. It's not even going to be 20,000. It's not even going to be 15,000. But I need you to call in. Tell me which one you are interested in because I'll tell you what. Oh, I love that oil on linen. I don't want to. I'm going to put this over here because in the words of the late, great Robin Williams, you don't want to clash. You don't want to have anything clash. All right. I'll tell you where we're going to start. Right here, right now. Oops. And I got a price. And this is one of the greatest paintings by Oleg you're ever going to get a chance to get. Stay. This one. He was telling Matt and Patty and me how hard it is to paint a monochromatic painting. A painting where the colors blend. It looks like there's more colors. There's, there's a lot of colors. Is that good, Wilson? This is one of the greatest Oleg's I've ever seen. This is Book Friend. 36 by 48. Tell you what I'm going to do on Book Friend. Oh, this is stunning. That could be the greatest monochromatic painting Oleg has ever done. 
Look at the hand gestures, the feet gestures. Long time ago, I got in a pull-up contest with Oleg, talking 12 years ago, because I said, then you paint the hand. He goes, Barry, you just don't paint hand. Do you know how many different ways fingers can move? You'll have no idea. Look at that. Book friend. I'm going to give you the absolute best starting price. Cannot take, will not consider. Anything lower in this, Patty. And this is so cheap, I hope they're out there. Oh, that is. That is monochromatic bliss. Look at this. This is too cheap. $5,000 to open. $250 increments once we get the open. That is one of the greatest works. If Oleg had painted something like this for collector's editions, it would have gone for several hundred thousand. Do you know the skill it takes to paint something like that? Yes. To give you a better understanding on what we're talking about here, I'm going to show you a little film I made on Oleg Javetin. And call me if you if you camera two if you know what you like, call me while this is running. But this is absolutely amazing. I call it Oleg Two. Listen to Oleg in his own words. Actually, I live here in the United States about 17 years. Why? Because I was invited to work here. I was invited to work here, and it's a very strange story. People saw my artwork actually on the street when uh, when Soviet Union was strong. It was not allowed any private enterprise. I, I start showing my artworks right in the street. And some entrepreneurs, uh, some American Russian entrepreneurs saw my artwork, they invite me here. They invite me here in, in the United States. And I came here in 1990. I didn't speak any language at all, any English. I had zero dollars in my pocket. And this is why that country is great. I start work and I start have success. My subject matter is very simple, very simple is uh, I paint mostly romantic paintings. I paint appreciations to the good relationship between people. That's it. Most of my paintings, it's a female and male. And male sometimes give her a letter or a flower. She can read the letter or see the beautiful flower. And she can appreciate his honest suggestions to, to her. Very simple. Why I like that? I tell you why. Because I don't want to produce any negativity. It's already so much negativity in our world, in the movies, in the paintings too, in the music. I try to work in that areas, but I don't want to do it anymore. I tell you why. How many years are I going to live? Maybe another 40 years, maybe 30, no more. After all my life I work in. I want to keep some paintings and public, public going to keep the paintings in their collection as something positive. So people, when they look, they have to have pleasure from, from what they look on. They have to have pleasure. Yes, we have negatives, a, lo a lot of negative around us. But I believe if we move our attention to more positive, everybody as a society, we're gonna have positive. It's simple as this. Uh, 
through the deep psychology, we are the humans. A lot of us don't have a simple one nature. Everybody, 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 even simple workmen somewhere in the factory, we all have deep psychological difference, differences even inside us. Each person sometimes can have two or three faces. It doesn't mean that person liar or it doesn't mean that person a bad person. No, no, no. It's a sophistication of any human being. Uh, it's a sophistication of our internal psychological depths. It's uh, multidimensional, multidimensional of any human being. Art is uh, one of activities uh, close to the intellectual life of the human beings. Why it's important? I tell you why it's important. Because we are human beings, we are not animals. <laughs> I think the art is the highest expression of human brain in any positions, in literature, music, or visual arts, or Mathematics, mathematics, the high-end mathematics is art too. It's very important because we are human beings. It's just one thing what divides us from rest of animal kingdoms. If tomorrow human beings decided to save that planet, they can save that planet. If tomorrow human beings decided to destroy that planet, they, they can destroy that planet. The difference simple lion or simple monkey or chimpanzee, they cannot do that. Uh, but we are, we are humans, we have tremendous power in our hands. And everything belongs to us, to our decision. Art is just one side of all that intellectual powers. That's why it's important. Human beings can have different pleasures. Uh, psychological pleasures, pleasures from music, uh, physical pleasures through touch, pleasures from food, pleasures from relationship. And art is another area where people can get huge pleasures, tremendous pleasures, especially if you understand. If you can teach yourself how to appreciate art, you can get a lot of, a lot of pleasures from it. You can see some beautiful painted details or expression of, on a face or combination of colors or combination of colors and textures. You can have huge pleasure for, for your mind and for your eyes. Enrichment, uh, enrichment pleasure, it's just pleasure. It's why uh, uh, Medicis in the past, in the 15th century, they were not stupid, they pay a lot of money to uh, Raphael or to Michelangelo to paint something good, something good. Because we have such a short time live in this world, the longest life is about a hundred years, no more. It's nothing. It's a hundred years. Some people live 50 years, 30. My little brother was killed in a car accident. He died when he was 33. Very young guy. Uh, we have such a short life to spend that, so my, my philosophy, try and enjoy every minute, everything. Try and enjoy every hour. Don't go into any stressful situation. You don't need to. Try and enjoy, try to make your life happy. Try to make your life happy. That's it, this is my philosophy. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to make a lot of money, it's good. If I don't make a lot of money, I make a little bit of money or no money at all, it doesn't matter, I have to paint. I just cannot do anything else. Folks, that was a film I made on Oleg a while ago. Oleg Gervetin, 
is a master graduate of the hardest art college on the planet. In 2018, when 19, when did COVID hit? What year, when was that? Like late 2019. Yeah, 2020, he went back to Moscow for a year and a half. He was one of the top of his class in the Surikov when he graduated there. And he ended up teaming up with a lady that was one year before him. And they were doing commissions in Moscow where they would get $220,000 up front before they painted a painting. That's how important Oleg is. That's how well known Oleg Javetin is. This is one, and you could tell how much Oleg cared about this painting the touch first touch and look at that it is absolutely stunning all the movement Oleg Javetin creates in this painting the hair blowing the wind it is second to none so when you see a retail of 125,000. People go, that's crazy. No, it isn't. It's not crazy to so many people in Moscow that paid Oleg and his uh, other Surikov student 220,000 for a painting that he hadn't even painted yet. He talked to them, tell them what they wanted in it. He'd make a few sketches, and then a little while later. He'd finalize the deal and he'd spend a while with his assistant painting it. I got a number here. And Ashley, they have Ashley Patty, Ashley's working remote. This is going to kill me. Should I put where I would open or should I put just the absolute best price? Single caller, if they call right now, if you want this, it's huge. And uh, uh, Patty, this is what I'm thinking. You know Oleg very well. Is this too cheap? Yeah, I want to make one sale right now. I know. I was telling Jack a paying like this on my Wednesday show will probably go for 8,500, 9,500, 11,000. I just wrote down a price. Call for the price. I only have six original Olegs. This is one of the largest one. This is the one that took Oleg forever. He was talking about creating this. Give me a call right now. This could be the greatest Oleg purchase you could ever think of. 125,000, that's cheap. Oleg was getting 220 in Moscow. But he thinks about money in a funny way, a different way. I have a price so cheap written down here. Mr. B, Mr. C, Mr. L, Mr. D, Barbara. Call me. If somebody has got to want this, the first touch, it's 57 inches. That is a large original oil. Now look at the blue, the phalo blue, and how, on the bottom, Wilson, how it goes down to it looks like the painting is on a rocker. Look at that. Every possible ge geometric shape that you could put in this, Oleg has put in this painting. And I'd love to show you this. I have a price here. I'm not going to show it to you. You call, the operators will tell you. This is must buy at this price. 
I mean, you're talking about an artist that on his own one year sold 10 paintings himself for over $100,000 each. That would have been a steal. Look at that. Almost tripped on my bag. Oh, that would have been worth seeing, wouldn't it? Call me up. I got six original Olegs. I have some John Milans. Tell you what, I could play Oleg part one, but I'm not. Patty, I'm going to do something I should have done in the very beginning. That original John Milan right there, I'm going to auction that. I got this. As my dad would have said, this is no hill for a stepper. has to do with horses and stuff. I hope it does. Now, folks, earlier tonight, I introduced the work of John Milan. John Milan runs the Milan Art Studio. They teach painting, drawing. They have a reunion of some of their most famous graduates in Miami this weekend. They have all become some very successful. This is a John Milan that's hung in his house. It is absolutely amazing. If you don't own a John Milan, 30 years of teaching art, he calls his series trans Transcendent. And it is one of the most coolest series ever done. Look at that. Look how he makes you think. And on Tranquility, this large painting, John told me I'm going to put one of my favorite paintings uh, in uh, your show. This is hanging over my fireplace. He talked to his wife, Ellie, about it, and they said, yes, let's send it. You know, this is 15,000. could have been 10 years ago. I mean, I, but this is stunning. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to test everybody right now because this is one of the coolest John Milan from the Transcend series. This is oil on canvas. Are you ready for this? $3,000 to open. $200 increments once we get the open. Look at that. You are transcending time and space. You are in multiple places at the same time in this painting. This is what a great artist who has spent his whole life doing. That is absolutely stunning. Look at that, 36 by 48 came off the artist fireplace. That is perfect painting. Show them the detail, like on that little island in the distance from the... Yeah, right there. You got it, Wilson. This is tranquility. There is more action. Love how he puts Roman numerals in it. He is causing thought... Hundred ways to yesterday. Oh, that's beautiful. How do you do that? 
Then you come to another spot and it's like the colors explode. I mean, it is just a perfect painting. And he even told me, he said, Barry, a lot of people would say I'm crazy sending this to you because this is one of the best paintings. I think this one best in show in Georgia somewhere, he said, this is one of my finest paintings. Probably should be on my show for 35000 but it's a strange night, and I decided to put this up. And I'm going to leave it at 3,000 for about another minute, and I am going to move on. Oh, look at that. Whoever gets this, I cannot imagine you would ever regret hanging this in your house. Oil on canvas. Tranquility. And it will provide that. Every different pigment you can think of. Patty, can you pick one of his pieces? on paper there that we hadn't shown that you go, Barry, why haven't you shown this one yet? Pick one that you go, that's pretty cool, but pick one, oh, look at that. You like that one better than that one with the stream? What, no, the other one? You like, yeah, that's so. Here is a John Milan original on paper, Milan Art School. You got that? Yes. This is rain. It is BC 2777. Yeah, 777. Yeah, you're talking about, I don't know, 3,500, 4,000 minimum. That's an original oil or acrylic on paper. Tell you what, start at zero, $200 increments. Retail, yeah, three or 4,000, whatever, 5,000. It's an amazing painting. Look at that. Start at zero. That's a perfect painting. I got a Peter Max. A John Milan original. I'm starting at zero. And I don't have a bid. All right, I'm taking that down so fast. Okay. Here's what I am going to do, Patty. Nah, I'll leave that Oleg back there. Oh, which Oleg is your favorite? What? All of, them. All of them. Tell you what. Let's let's take this easel away for right now. I don't want you to call me. I'm bewildered, folks. I have one of the greatest artists I've ever met. 
I've worked with him for 17 years. I watched him at collector's editions just go crazy with his Russian romantics, romanticism. And I have six Oleks, five large ones. This is one of the greatest artists on the planet. There were stories that uh, one of Putin's assistants bought one in Moscow and it actually hung in the Kremlin. And all he said, I can't prove it. Call me. If you've been a good customer, I'll give you a deal of a lifetime. We are talking about Oleg Javetin, master Russian artist. We'll pan the, the pieces. Folks, Of Mr. S is out there. I know Melvin finally got his. We have made huge improvements to our shipping and the time it takes to get it. And uh, if you're out there, give us a call. Okay. All right. All right. You got to feed the monster once. What? Yeah. I figured that. Tell you what. I I got to I got to on this one. Here's what I'm going to do. Now, I'll tell you what. I, I'm gonna, I'll show you how serious I am. I'm going to make you guys a deal that nobody on the planet could make you any day of the week. Let's see. Tell you what I'm going to do. Right here, tell Ashley, tell the world, I got a price on this. I'm losing money. I'm going to lose top or bottom, Wilson. Either one. Bottom. <laughs> we got to. Is that, that looks good. Tell you what. BC two seven six four. I'm going to lose money doing this, Patty. I'm going to lose money. I'm talking, I probably paid more than this. And this is one of my most special ones. Should I just put it on the screen? No, they're going to think all of this. I'm just feeding the dragon here. Look how cheap this is going to be. Yeah. 
If you call right now, you got to call right now because I don't mind holding these on until uh, a place that Wilson's familiar with might freeze over. Yeah, tell Ashley that price. Tell everybody that price. Folks, these are the greatest Oleg Javetin. One of the greatest artists I have known in my 33 years on TV. I showed you the picture when I first went to his house uh, 17 years ago because Collector's Editions kept lying to me, telling me he's in Russia when he wasn't. I just gave Patty a price. I just gave Juliet a price. I just gave Ashley who's working remote a price that I'm probably losing money on. You should call if you like Oleg Javetin. In my humble opinion, a hundred years will come and go. They'll be talking about Oleg, he'll be dead, and he'll be more valuable. 200 years will come and go. This is one of the greatest Russian romanticist artists of all time. I've never seen an artist this talented using geometrical shapes and color theory that he learned at the Surikov. To date, Patty, only one American has ever been accepted to go to the Surikov. That's how tough it is to get in. I just gave a price to the operators, to Ashley, to everybody that is so cheap. I don't know what to tell you. You got to call. And if you're watching, please call. Because on this piece, we're losing money. I only have 25 minutes left. Call us. I can't believe that price I just gave. No, I can't believe either. That's crazy. That really? Yeah, I said that. Okay. I'm going to sit down here. Ugh. What had to end sometime, Patty. You know what I could do, Wilson? I am really good. Not at many things, but one thing I'm really good at, guessing somebody's weight. Oh, I can guess it better than Steve Martin in The Jerk. I can guess somebody's weight. Yeah, I don't think that pays much, though, does it? <laughs> Folks, I got deals on Oleg Javetin. I, I have no idea. But this one, I just priced it so cheap. When you add in credit card fees and stuff, I can't even make any money. I'm losing money. And that is one of the prettiest Oleg's, period. End of story. I am going to get out of the way of the camera because that only hurts sales.
camera two. Oh, I'm going to show you something that's nine minutes long. I showed you part two. This is part one. You ever wanted Oleg? Something weird's going on. Did, did the rapid rebellion already begin? And, and that's why people aren't calling? Take a look at this. This is nine minutes. My name is Oleg Zhvetin. I was born in the former Soviet Union. I was born in a small town close to Tashkent city. Tashkent is a pretty big city in Central Asia. It used to be part of Soviet Empire. But when I was grow up, I never knew all of, all of that stuff. I just grew up. When I was grow up, I don't know the difference between socialism or communism or capitalism or anything else, all that political crap. I just grew up as a little boy, that's it. I, I just grew up, I love uh, to see flowers, nature, play Indians, actually we play American Indians. <laughs> My earliest memories, I just uh, love to draw. I, I draw on the furniture, on the walls, uh, on the paper. If I have a piece of paper, I, I just draw. My family, we have three kids. I used to have sister older than me and brother um, younger than me. My father is a simple engineer. Actually, he was chief engineer in the furniture factory. And uh, we have simple life. I'm thanks, thankful to my parents because they was educated actually behind their, their limits, behind what they need to know in their lives. We have a great library, great library. So I, I wrote a lot. I wrote a lot of American artists, American writers too. And I, I was just a simple boy, just read a little bit. Uh, the, the important probably we don't have much TV. That time, Soviet Union, Russia at the time, we had just three channels was controlled by government. And we have just a simple corny movies, probably not much news because they don't show news at all. Here in the United States, uh, people always stressful. Why? Because they always see the horrible news. Somebody killed here, somebody uh, has a drug overdose, somebody got a uh, car accident, terrorism here, terrorism here. Always stressful news. Back in Soviet times, no, no, no. Even if Russia has some kind of trouble like this, they never show on TV. They never show on TV. They, they always show positive news. Like, let's say, uh, that farmer got thousands uh, more cows, and that's it. <laughs> the whole news like this. <laughs> If I couldn't paint, uh, I have to make somehow my living. I don't know. I would be probably homeless. But, uh, I cannot do anything else. I cannot do any. Uh, my early age, when I was like 17 years old, and I was in uh, art school, but I cannot make any money from my art. My father was chief engineer in furniture factory. So uh, one time I came to him and I told to him, look, I, I have to make some extra money for my clothes, for my girlfriends were, he said, okay, you can go in my factory and work as a simple blue color fa factory workman. And you can make maybe about 200, 300 bucks a month. And I tried did that. I, I go to the factory and work about three months. And it was so hard and it's, uh, <laughs> I don't want to do that anymore. It's not because it's hard labor. Uh, I, I'm not afraid hard labor. It's, uh, what uh, stopped me to do it anything, I start to understand I don't like it. I just don't like it, I start to understand I have to stick what I like. What I, I like to paint and that's it. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna be an artist.
But I joined the Surikov Art Institute called Vasily Surikov Art Institute when I was um, um, 20 or 21. It's very, very difficult school to get into. Why? I tell you why. Because in Soviet times, to join that school, a lot of, a lot of competition to join that school. Why? Because it's, uh, let's say, just, let's say, take huge megapolis like Moscow. 10 million people live in Moscow. And uh, in Moscow, we have probably two or three schools high end like this, no more. And 200 million people in country. And let's say how many thousands of artists who want to join and to be an artist and get that high, uh, high end excellent education. Thousands of people. So when you go to there, you, you have to show your artworks. You have to show your skills, your education, and you have to pass it through examination. So when you compete, uh, you, you, you have to take some tests in art, in, in uh, drawings, in composition, in paint, in uh, art history, in uh, language, in a uh, little bit in philosophy. And every test, you have, you have to have excellent grades. If you don't have excellent grades, you just lose. That's it, because school has to choose uh, the, the most excellent person to study. Uh, you have to show real paintings, not photographs, not for portfolio, real paintings. Uh, so I, I, I take my paintings, I put them in a train, put myself in a train, travel three days, it's a big, Russia is a very big country. So from south to Damascus, I travel about three days in a train, uh, take some taxis, so show the paintings, real paintings to the persons who are reliable, who make making decisions. So they can allow to put you compete. A lot of guys show their paintings, it doesn't matter. They, they can see the paintings and they say, no, no, we cannot accept you. We cannot accept you even to try compete. So first step, you have to show the paintings and they can see the paintings and probably they can see some potential inside. So they can say, yes, we can allow you to start competition. In Russia, in Soviet times, artists cannot paint even human being or any cityscape or landscape or any nature. It was against uh, religious rules. Simply, I can have consequences. For example, if I paint something like I paint now in Russia, back in Russia, I could be arrested. It's simple as this. Why? Because I don't paint some stupid portraits of some proletarian guys or some party propaganda. Uh, what they actually tell you to paint. A KGB guy come to you and say, okay, you have to paint here Lenin or here some Karl Marx and here some revolutionary guards or whatever. And uh, of course, a lot of people say, yeah, yeah, I paint it. And they paint, they got their salary, and that's it. But if you don't do it, you don't paint, you paint something else, you, it, very simple. They can arrest you, they can abuse you in jail, torture. It's very simple like this. Can spend, let's say, 10, seven years just for nothing, for saying something, or paint some paintings, or create some music what doesn't suit to the music of communistic taste. I just have to change my situation around me so I don't want to go to prison. Why? Because I want to paint certain paintings. It's simple as this. So I moved to the United States, and amazingly, I never was arrested for my paintings. <laughs> Even more, I was appreciated. Here, public start like my paintings. Hi, folks. Barry Chappell coming to you live from Hollywood, California, home of the Primetime Shopping Network studios and our phone bank. I have some of the greatest Oleg's I've ever seen. Oleg uh, spends more time painting this. He lives in a very small little town uh, in a corner of an area of California a lot of people don't stop in. And he uh, 
it's very hot where he lives too, but he uses all of his abilities. Master graduate from the Surikov. I have six Oleks. I thought they'd all be gone by now, and they're not. I will give you deals that you could only dream of because this show has not gone my way. It hasn't even come close. First touch, that's huge. This painting by Oleg, once again, he has sold many paintings. Many of the Oleg's have sold for over $200,000 in Moscow. In the United States, with collector's editions, uh, 20 years ago, a painting like this would have been put in collector's editions gallery, 110, 105,000, gone. I mean, Oleg is one of the all-time greatest. He uses geometrical shapes and Russian romanticism and all the techniques it encumbers, incumbents on that technique. Look at that granite stool. You look at that, Wilson, and you think that's a piece of granite there. That's how good Oleg Javetin paints. One of my favorites, if I was going to buy one, and I love all of his work, The Three Graces was a painting I had bought from Collector's Editions. I saw my show and it got returned, and then I hung it in my house, and I sold it a few years later, and it went for 19000 on my, one of my art shows. This right here, Wilson, I think that's genius. To paint a monochromatic gray, black, and brown painting using geometrical shapes and putting eyes, a nose, and a mouth on that book and calling the painting Book Friend. Look at that. Very few artists on the planet could do that. I had this at such a low price, I can't even say it out loud. Got to call the phone bank. Look at that. And Wilson, that's coming out as beautiful as it is, right? I mean, I'm looking on the monitor. That is stunning. Call me. Unfortunately, I only got 11 minutes left. If you want a John Milan, an Oleg Javetin, a Michael Schofield, call. The painting... What? Deal. Who who's asking? Oh. And I don't want to get Jack mad at me. I probably already have. But Patty, if this doesn't sell, I'm putting this in my car. Just like Steve Martin and the jerk. All I need is my dog. I can't say the name that Steve Martin called his dog. And I'm going to take the chair and my monochromatic Oleg Javetin, my nicotine gum, and my phone. And my Mountain Dew. And my sticky notes and my Oleg folder and my glasses. No, I'm not going to take anything without. So, is actually getting quite a few calls because I'm down to nine minutes. And I thank you all. 
I do have a Peter Max here. I'll work your deals on that. Look at that, Wilson. That's genius right there. This one right here. That's genius. How do you come up with an idea like that? Call it book friend. Let's use all those geometrical shapes. Any other calls, folks? Concerns? I mean, this one, I was speculating with Oleg. I thought this one, the way that granite uh, stool just appears, I'm going, that, that will just. This is huge, too. Anybody, call me. I got eight minutes left. Yeah. Which one are they interested in, Patty? Book, Fr book friend? Uh, put them on the road as a buyer. I can't buy it for that. I <laughs> nobody can. But thank you, though. I sure appreciate it. Um, well, is there any other concerns, calls? Wow. Patty, I'm going to just, so this is light. I'm just going to put it right here so I can grab this one. What? No, I'm just going to pull this one right out. So, Wilson, I'm going to stand behind it like I stand behind all my art. For 33, well, 32 years in the book, I'm in my 33rd year. I was talking about Marilyn Monroe with this piece. Look at that. Folks, you walk around it, you see something different. It should be in a palace somewhere. Look at that. BC 2760. Look at yeah, look at that granite stool right there. Hey Ashley, I mean Patty, look at the granite school stool. Look on the monitor. Look at that. How do you how do you paint a granite stool that realistic? What's that? Okay. Steel, whoever, yeah, that would be a steel. Look at this. This is the one me and Oleg, I told Oleg would sell first. This granite stool, and granite beauty would sell first. Are they sold? Oh. Well, she put up... Uh, 
I'm not going to argue with Juliana. I, uh, those. We're verifying on these two right here. And Ashley, tell them they're getting the deal of a lifetime. Especially, look at that. I know I got three minutes. We'll still be here, though. We'll still be here. Will we be broadcasting on the internet? <laughs> Ashley, that'd be a heck of a deal. This one. I actually thought I'd get 11000 for this because of all the work Oleg did in this one piece of granite beauty. He was telling me and how many hours he spent on the face, every inch of the face. He was so passionate when he was speaking about uh, he, Oh, he was so passionate. Yeah. Well, I got three minutes left. And let's move these two aside. Let's pretend they're going to sell, Patty, because they might. Can you click your heels together? I think I can. I think I can. <laughs> oh, that's too heavy for you. And this one, oh my goodness, the dancer. Look at that. Look at the dancer. So what, I got about 120 seconds, Wilson, give or take a few seconds. Look at that. The wind is blowing, her hair is blowing. Look at that. You talk about the linen. That is linen, folks. That's what he paints on. Well, this one. That was oil on linen. Yeah, oil on linen, which is a no pun intended, Juliet, a dog of a different breed. And nobody thinks my great rabbit rebellion is even going to be considered. Well, folks, I want to thank you. Keep calling after the show. And... Uh, be safe, and uh, hopefully I'll be back next week. It's going to be up to Jack. Uh, thank you very much. We love you. Bye-bye.